What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Deep Rock Galactic, one of my favorites. And this is one of those videos that I've been very excited about putting together, merely due to the fact that this game has one of its largest content patches ever coming in the next week. It may be live by the time this video goes up on the 4th. The developers are launching their free seasonal system which gives you a themed season to the game, which adds all kinds of stuff, new weapons, uh, new upgrades, new overclocks, new cosmetics, tons of new stuff to work towards. Uh, the galaxy is about to get invaded by robots, Borg-like robots that are going to get in the way of mining operations. So if you've never seen Deep Rock Galactic before, what is Deep Rock Galactic? Deep Rock Galactic is a dystopian dwarvish mining sim set in space where you are a team of dwarves that has to go down into a asteroid or like a planet called Hoxes that's covered with minerals and you're part of a giant corporation that doesn't care about your life at all. The goal is to go in, accomplish a task, come back out, you get upgrades, you level up, you customize your weapons, there's an end game to it as well in the form of deep dives, which are kind of like this game's version of raids. Uh, and you do this all along with other players. It's got a class-based system where all four characters are very distinct and very, very interesting. I can give you a look at what those look like. You've got the driller. He does exactly what he sounds like. He uses flamethrowers and he can drill through anything. We've got the engineer who's all about stationary defenses. He put down turrets. He's got a nuclear grenade launcher. He's got an automatic shotgun and an SMG. He has the ability to put down platforms so that other characters can reach high up places. You've got the gunner. He puts up zip lines that people can use to move around. He's got a minigun. He's got an auto cannon. He's got all kinds of fun stuff to play around with. And you've got the scout. The scout is responsible for scouting, exactly what it sounds like. He's fast, he has very little HP, and he has the ability to illuminate areas and he can reach spots that no one else can reach by using a grappling hook. And so anyways, all of my characters have been customized here. I play this game entirely way, way, way too much given the limited space that I have. I'm only prestige one on a lot of this stuff. It's just because I don't really prestige or anything else like that, but I should probably get around to it. Uh, but we're going to start off, we're going to play a mission, I'll show you how that all functions, and then we'll go through some of the customizable aspects of the game that I think you might be interested in. If you're planning on jumping in, now's a great time to do it, because like I said, that massive content patch is like right around the corner that's going to add all kinds of fun new goodies for you to play around with. So let's pick out a mission, shall we? Uh, the game is divided up into a number of different biomes. All of these biomes have their own trials, travails, and problems that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, so for example, in the case of, let's say... The salt pits. There tend to be a lot of chasms that you have to deal with, which is really super annoying. Uh, inside the radioactive exclusion zone, there's going to be a lot of radioactivity you have to deal with. Inside a place like the sandblasted corridors, there's going to be sandstorms, and that makes it so that you move really slow and you have no visibility every now and again. The magma core has randomly collapsing areas where you can fall down into a death pit of fire if you're not careful. The glacial strata has blizzards that come through that block your vision and freeze you in place. Uh, lots of other, and they also affect the mobs that will spawn there and the things that will happen. In the case of what I'm trying to do as of right now, I do, I am working on a quest at the moment. The game has things called assignments, which are basically chains of missions that unlock new weapons, they unlock new cosmetics, they unlock end game utilities, they unlock, you know, new difficulty levels, stuff like that. I never got around to unlocking the lethal difficulty levels, so that's what I'm working on right now before the expansion comes out. Now, but anyways... Let's find a mission and let's get after it. I don't know what missions you guys will find to be the most appealing, uh, but there's about six or seven different mission types. The new content drop is going to add another couple uh, so that you get a little bit more variety in your life. There's everything from simple mining missions where it's like go down, mine thing, bring back. Uh, there's point defense, which is like wave defense while you grab objectives that are out on the map. There's protecting a giant driller. There's collecting alien eggs. I mean, there, there's a bunch of little, there's assassinations on like super bosses and stuff like that. Really comes down to what you want to do inside the context of the game. I sort of feel like doing a mission where we hunt a boss might actually be kind of fun. So let's do that. Uh, so we'll go for a boss hunt mission right here where we got to kill three dreadnoughts. Sounds like a plan. I will host that publicly so that maybe some people will jump on in and we can do this with multiple people available. There are modifiers on every run. Not every run, but a lot of runs. That's what these little icons on right here. Uh, some of the caves are haunted, which means you're never-endingly chased by one giant ghost bug. 
uh, that deals damage. There's stuff like enemies drop double gold. There's like leeches that come up out of the ground and like try to attach to you. There's areas that are infested with like these grabber things on the ceiling. Lots of different modifiers to kind of make things interesting. All the levels are procedurally generated, uh, so you will never see the same map twice. But we'll host this publicly, we'll put it on dangerous difficulty, and we'll give it a go. Let's go check the beer counter real fast and see if there's going to be any beers that'll help us out. Uh, there's buff beers over here where you can drink beer to get buffs for your run. We have the Dark Morkite. Eh, we don't really need that. It just increases our mining yields on a very specific resource that's pretty much only for one mission type, so it's not really that helpful to us for right now. But let's deploy on, and it's time for us to see what rich bounties await us down below. Rock and stone, brother. Down deep into the mines for rock and stone. Uh, rock and stone is what all the dwarves shout in this game almost conspiratorially. You can press the V key at any time. So anyways, now that you've learned the fundamental mechanic of the game, which is spamming rock and stone, I'm going to put up some lights so that I can see and kind of figure out where resources are at. Now, those are gunk seeds right there that are hanging from the ceiling. Those are our secondary objective. If you right-click, you mine. That's pretty much the entire thing. The levels in this game are entirely deconstructible and destroyable. Uh, you can make paths and things wherever you want. It's just time-consuming unless you have a driller. I'm going to go ahead and gather up some of this gold because we're playing solo at the moment. No other dwarves have joined into our game. We've got Bosco, which is a customizable robot that you bring. This game is soloable. You may run into some trouble soloing on difficulties. Like, level 4 difficulty is going to be tough solo using only Bosco. Level 5 is going to get really, really bad. Uh, so anyways, we've got a little bit of nitro over here. We use these to call in supply pod drops. The supply pods are going to allow us to get more ammunition, refill our health, stuff like that. I'll go ahead and grab these all off the wall real quick. We can press C at any time. Oh, there's buggies over there. Oi, bugs, what are you doing inside my cavern? Get out of here. Go away, bugs. Nobody's got time for you. If you press the C key, it's going to call over Molly, which is your mule. This is where you deposit all the resources that you've been pulling out. Go ahead and put up a few more flares just to make sure I didn't miss anything here. All right, and we'll deposit our goodies. Uh, you get XP for every single thing that you mine down in the dungeon, so if you're trying to level up effectively, being kind of a completionist about mining things is a good idea. This right here is, I think, Bismer. Uh, Bismer is used for crafting new weapon attachments and weapon mods and new weapons themselves. And so we definitely want to take that with us, especially if you're an early game player, a.k.a. a Greenbeard. Uh, that's the community name for people that are brand new players. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab some of this gold over here to get some extra money at the end of the run, because honestly, I find that money is the one thing that caps me in this game. Uh, those blow up if you shoot them, so you can use them as kind of devastating little booby traps for the enemy if you pay attention. Go ahead and blow that up right there. That right there is miner sugar. You use that in order to restore your health if your health gets low. I need to pick a bug and I need to befriend it too. I've got a special ability that allows me to tame a bug and use him to tank for me. And since I'm squishy, that's usually a pretty good idea. Uh, let's continue going this way. If you press F, you'll throw a flare. Illumination is highly important in this game. Not being able to see is going to be really, really bad for you. A little bit more nitro over here. We do have a bug up there, but I'm looking for one of the special varieties of bugs that I want to tame. I, I need my friends to be special, okay? I'm special. I need my friends to be special. Uh, there are modified bugs. Basically, there's slashers, spitters, and there's little guardians, too. And the guardians are the best for tanking. The slashers are the best for dealing damage if you take them as a pet. So on and so forth. They've all got different utilities and stuff they'll do for you. We need 80 nitra in order to call in a supply drop. I don't actually plan on pulling any bosses right now. That's the boss egg. Uh, once we shoot that, one of the things that we're hunting will spawn. And so anyways, I'm not super inclined to do that just yet. This is a loot bug. You can pet it or you can murder it and it will give you sweet loot. Uh, we'll go ahead and kill that guy over there. Alright, that's cleared out a hazard. Uh, yeah, I can probably hook shot over to here. We'll take a look around, see if there's any more resources. Just kind of in the neighborhood. I'm a little bit of a collectaholic when I play this game. I can't help it. I like to get everything. A lot of people like to speed run this game and play it as fast as possible. I like to pick through the entire level and get every single last scrap of profitable stuff because I am an ideal employee. Uh, let's see. We grab that gunk seed while we're over here. Yeah, I don't really see it. Well, there's gold over there. Yeah, there's a little bit of that gold stuff, a little bit of that oro. We'll go ahead and grab it real fast. I do like getting paid more at the end of the mission, so I think I'll take that. 
I'm gonna continue having a look around and waiting for people to join up. Hey, we have our first friend who has joined us for the dystopian mining adventure. Uh, if he's a gunner, we should be able to do this. The only reason I'm holding off on pulling the boss until people join is because the scout is probably the weakest DPS class in the game. Uh, I'm here for basically playing the objective, grabbing gold, getting resources that other people can't reach, that kind of stuff. And so we need like other people to kind of help us out here. I have no doubt that I could probably solo it, but it's going to be a long, tedious experience. Ah, he's an NG. That'll be helpful. That's a uh, standard protocol is you always rock and stone everybody that joins the game. It's just good manners, okay? But you got to be careful. You might set off a howl sometimes. Like, you rock and stone one time, and then all of a sudden everybody's rock and stoning, and it's just like this cacophony of rocking and stoning. All right, he's putting down turrets. I'll help him out with that real fast. There we go. This is actually a really good boss arena for fighting in because it's circular, which means his turrets can get maximal coverage. So that's really, really nice. This is the kind of area that I always, like, wish for when I play a game. <laughs> when I play as an engineer, I'm just like, man, I always get, like, these thin corridors where you've got, like, a blind angle and you just can't get around it. Whereas this is, like, perfect, dude. It figures. The one time I'm not playing engineer, uh, there's the perfect arena for setting up a fight. All right. Let's break open this bad Betty. Let's see what we got here. We got the Glyphid Dreadnought. All right. So you got to shoot this guy in the butt. That's the secret. His butt is the weak spot. I'm just going to kind of, like, go up here. And then, oh, my God. All right. Hover boots. I got to run from this dude. I don't want to get blowed up. He's aggroed on me, which means the engineer is going to be doing the vast majority of the hard, heavy lifting for right now. There goes a giant fireball that would have absolutely wrecked me if it had hit me. I'm just going to kind of, oh, my God. He zeroed out my health pretty good. All right. That was painful. Now it's my turn to DPS because he's on the engineer. We got his butt armor off, which is great. And the explosives just helped us out with a little bit of DPS, too. I'm going to put up a little bit of that over there. Go over to here. Grab some health. There we go. We got two more dwarves on the way. We're in good shape, man. I think we're in good shape, man. I'm going to kind of just leap over to here and just kind of stay out of range. There's another Glyphid Praetorian over there. I'm going to get him, and I'm going to stay the hell away from that thing. Uh, I just don't want to be anywhere near him because he more than has the capability to one-shot me. So he's very, very risky. I'm going to come down this way. Oh, he's down. Like I said, he had the power to one-shot him. He's got the power to one-shot me. Uh, I'm going to go this way. And we'll just kind of pick off some of the little tiny baby bugs that are around. I don't know if I can freeze this dude. Apparently I can, uh, but it doesn't last very long. I've got freezy grenades. Everybody's got their own types of grenades that they can customize and bring with them. I'll pick him up real fast. There's no limit on the amount of times you can res somebody, so keep that in mind. Uh, so, like, oftentimes, this can turn into just a big battle of attrition. Oh, we got a gunner. Thank God. You got to have a gunner, man. Like, killing stuff gets so much easier when you have a gunner. We've got one guy down over there. I'll go get the res. Pick him on up. Your time is not yet here, brother. Your time is not yet ow here. Is he on me? Who's he on? Uh, he's on, like, everybody. He's just in a mood. He's just being kind of grumpy. Hover boots. Oof. Okay. Looks like his butt armor is cracked, though, so we're in good shape there. Let's go ahead and wipe him out. Come on. Give me the booty. Give me the booty, buggy. Give me the booty. Give me the booty. So after a long and arduous fight, I think we've just about got him down. We had a player DC on us, which is unfortunate. Uh, but down goes the Dreadnought. He has been taken care of. And so obviously you've got to do the customary cheer once you finish that off. I'm going to go get some miner's sugar real quick. Which is basically just space dwarf cocaine. That's all you really need to know about it. Is everything that's implied is that it's like some kind of drug for dwarves that makes them like instantly feel better. It's kind of one of those like straight up the nostril, I feel great type deals. Well, we can probably grab a couple gunk seeds while we're over here. What's up with this room over here? This is where we spawned at. Okay, so now we gotta hunt down the next dreadnought. Let's go see if we can find him. Well, we found our second bug, and it's another one of the big guys. This guy functions a little different though. The Dreadnought Hive Guard, he's going to have, like, a bunch of little minions that come out. Those guys right there, you got to done kilt them. 
And then once you kill him, he's gonna grow like these little, I don't even know what to call them, uh, fleshy protrusions out of his body. If you shoot all the fleshy protrusions, then you'll be good to go. And he'll open up so that you can actually deal damage to him. But up until then, we kind of just gotta wait around until, you know, he's actively got spots that we can shoot. After this guy, we got one more to go. This is actually a pretty beefy Dreadnought mission, in all honesty. Normally, you just gotta kill two, so killing three, definitely a bit of a longer mission, in all honesty. I should have paid attention to that a little bit better before I queued it on up, but it looks like he's over there aggressively attempting to eat my engineer. They're probably none too happy with me right now. He was hidden behind a wall, and while I was mining through the wall, I accidentally spawned him, so I feel kind of bad about it. People didn't really have the appropriate amount of time to ready up. Mm, where are his little minions at? His little minions around? There they are. They were hiding over in the corner. Sometimes due to the level layouts being randomized, they have trouble, like, finding their way out. We gotta kill, like, four or five of them before he's gonna spawn the little thingies on them that we can shoot. Where are the rest of them at? There we go. The last one's been killed. So those little fleshy bits right there, don't question what those are on the bug. I just learned to stop thinking about it because it's gross. I don't know what they are, but... They, they, they stick out and they become firm when his little allies are killed. And so anyways, it's one of those things you got to watch out for. Uh, we got some damage going out on him right there. And then we effectively just repeat the process after this. That's pretty much it. Uh, he's doing his little angry stomp right there. Hey, we've got another fa- Oh, he fired a fireball at me. What else you would do with a fireball? I don't really know. But I should probably stop eating those straight to the dome. That's probably... That's probably bad organization. There we go, right up the poop chute. Arrgh! All right, we're coming up on the final quarter here, although I am absolutely getting blasted with fire. Weirdly enough, Beard's not fireproof. Wish that they were, they aren't. I'm gonna see if I can get around behind him here for when the shield goes down. Put a little bit of something right there. Come on, give me the booty. Give me the booty. Where that booty at? There it is. Hey, another with my last bullet too. How often does that happen? Killed him with my final bullet. All right, let's find the team. Let's get another supply drop in. Oh, he already did the supply drop. I was gonna say we're gonna need a supply drop pretty bad. I'm basically out of everything. I would like to have a little bit more, but I just. I don't. Man, that gunk seat is so far. I don't know if I want to go get it. Uh, I'll bring you guys back in for the next boss fight because we got chaos happening right now. Mining away, mining all day. Trying not to eat, eat by bug because it's lame. Going in a tunnel. Gonna use a funnel to get all these minerals now. Ooh, there's our final destination, but this is a really bad spot to fight at. This is a pretty freaking terrible spot to fight a boss. Not excited about it. I'm going to try to clear out a little bit of space here. But I don't feel positively about this situation. I feel I feel like this is going to go very, very badly. This is a very small fight arena. And so we kind of run the risk of getting... I mean, we've already... I know what boss it's going to be. It's going to be the double Arby's, uh, which are two range guys that share health. But they have a ranged attack that AoEs, and this is a really small fight arena. This is pretty bad. Now, there are special events that will randomly spawn inside the levels, and those actually are a part of game progression as well. Uh, effectively, ooh, more nitro, hold on. I got ADD when it comes to mining stuff. There we go, let me mine it on up real quick so that we got a little extra resupply. Uh, there's a helmet down here. What this helmet does is when you scan it, it will tell you the location of a backpack, and then the backpack will give you new cosmetics for your pickaxe, in case that's what you're looking for. And, and so anyways, there's other stuff too. There's going to be ancient relics. If you activate an ancient relic, you can infuse one of your cores, which is the end game progression. Uh, you get a couple of cores a week, I think like six or seven a week, and you can infuse them with cosmetics that are like really, really rare and hard to get. You can use them to build weapons. You can use them to do all kinds of stuff, and the only way to infuse the cores is to find that event that's around. But anyways, oh, did they just pop the boss? Uh-oh. 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 Not great. Okay, I'm going to head back and see if I can help with the boss. Uh-oh. Yeah, found my way to the boss fight. It's definitely popping off over here. 
Uh, so with these double Arby's right here, they share health. Every time they go underground, they redistribute and average their health, basically, uh, which can make them a little bit of a headache to deal with. I think if I can get up close and get him with the S... Oh, my God, he's behind me. He's behind me. I was going in for the booty shot, and he done booty shotted me. I done been booty shot. All right, well, let's see if we can finish these bosses off, huh? Now, these guys are pretty simple. They just fire a lot of grenades and things. That's why they're called arbalests. They don't have any weak spots or anything, as far as I know. You just kind of mag dump them and hope they die. There we go. I will help. Ooh, Gunner put down his shield. Nice. Bugs can't go through this shield. That's one of the Gunner's, like, signature abilities, is being able to put down shields that protect you. Uh, Macteras, now's not the time. Oh, this is really bad. That Mactera caused problems. Yeah, now we're slowed. He puts goo all over the ground so that you can't move good. I'm out of ammo, too. We have a number of worrisome problems here. All right, one dread down, and then there's one more to go. Where's he at? Oh, he went up into the wall. There we go. Dropped him. Perfecto. Uh, did we grab that backpack? Where's that backpack at? It's like underneath us down here. Yeah, we've got this terrain scanner you can use. Hey, and there it is. Whole bunch of treasure down here with the backpack that we were looking for. Uh, it looks like we got a new cosmetic from that, so it gave me Splattered, which is going to be a skin that makes you all blood spattered with bug blood. I've seen other people rocking it. It's just the default skin covered in blood. There we go. We'll jump back up this way. This is why I like playing Scout, is because, like, I don't really have to worry. Like, playing the Driller and playing the Scout, you've got, like, really good mobility. You can basically get wherever you want to go. The Gunner, in exchange for having crazy damage, is really limited on movement options. Uh, the engineer is kind of the same. So now that we've pretty much tapped out the level, this is the fun part of the game. The rest of it was fun too, but this part is also fun. Uh, we push the button, this will go back to the drop pod, and we've got to make a mad dash while a massive bug horde chases us. And the mass of the horde goes up with the difficulty that you're playing on. Let's see where the drop pod comes down. It's 130 meters that way. That should be actually pretty... I think that's like right here. That's not actually that far. Oh. Our driller has really good spatial awareness. I didn't even realize it connected right there. Drillers are kind of on like some different stuff when it comes to knowing like the map. Like drillers really have to be aware of whatever is happening on the map. Let me take a look here and figure out where the drop pod's at. Oh good, Mac Terra is just what I wanted to deal with. Die. Thank you. Oh, more bugs too. Goody, goody a gumdrops. All the bugs in the world. Fantastic. Uh, I think we're trying to go over to the right and so back through this little dirt wall right here and then we should be the hell up out of here pretty oh my god they're everywhere uh, these things tase you and they make you move slow a lot of things in the game make you move slow okay that tends to be like their special move is everything slows you down drop pause right over here and it looks like we had an easy egress time for us to go Get the hell out of here. Uh, once everybody's inside the pod and the mule has been connected, this gate will go down and we can get the hell out of here. And as you can see, the mule is going to get sucked up by a magical little ray right there. They don't let us come home unless the money comes home. That's part of the dystopian vibe of this game is they don't mind leaving a guy behind if it means they make a profit. We'll jump back on the ship and I will give you a tour of all of the fun stuff that you can do inside the core base. Just to wet your whistle a little bit and let you see that, like, this is one of the best designed co-op games in existence right now. Alright, so we're back at base after our mission. We've collected our XP. We've gotten our money. Uh, what stuff is there to do progression-wise here at the base? Well, there's all kinds of stuff to explore in the base. There's fun little things like turning off the gravity. There's little voice lines if you kick a barrel down into the field, the force field down here that's keeping the ship inside. I mean, there's a bunch of little stuff, but as far as the game goes, this is the pickaxe station. This is where you customize your pickaxe and make it more awesome. Uh, this is your equipment station. You can customize your guns over here. Every gun has a whole bunch of different loadouts you can throw onto it. And overclocks, which are the end game progression. There's also skins for all your various guns that you can mess around with. You unlock those inside of missions. There's lots of different like color schemes and whatnot you can throw around. 
Every character has two main weapons and two secondary weapons. You can customize your pickaxe. We've got your flare gun, which you can customize. Your grappling hook is customizable. Different grenades that you can equip for going on out. You've got different armor customizations you can do as well. And these are different for every single class in the game. Aside from that, this is where you take missions. This is where your objectives are going to be for unlocking new weapons, new modes, and stuff like that. This is the customization terminal where you can use all of the stuff you've gathered in the missions to get just loads of different things for your characters that make them all look different and stand out. Uh, right here is the mineral exchange. Just in case you've got a lot of one mineral and you need another mineral, you can swap them for each other over here. There's also deals of the day where you can sell some stuff to get money. Uh, aside from that, you'll also find Deep Dives, which is the end game mode. These are chained missions that you do back to back while sharing resources, one mission to the next. Uh, and if you get all the way through it, you can do it once a week. You'll unlock blank cores and new end game cores for customizing your character. Over here is the Forge. This is where you can build the stuff that you've unlocked using resources. Everything from cosmetics to things that make your guns do different stuff and perform along different vectors. Um, aside from that, you'll also find the bar on this side where you can get the beers that you unlock that give you different buffs and make different fun stuff happen. There's a jukebox for dancing, and then there is shooting hoops with barrels. There's an achievement for if you sink a certain number and get a certain score in a certain amount of time. But anyways, this is a fantastic game. It's got a great community that's very full of friendly people. Uh, I see very little toxicity in this game, which online is very, very rare. There's loads of stuff to unlock. There's tons of things to do, and in a couple of days, it's going to expand outwards and get even more things to do. And all of it is always free. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile of find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Hopefully you got a fun idea of Deep Rock Galactic. This is, in my opinion, the best co-op game on the market as of right now. You put it up against Back for Blood. You put it up against Left for Dead. You put it up against just about any other other game and I think it comes out smelling like roses with its head held high it's a game that I frequently revisit play for three or four hours and then put it on the shelf for a month or two come back play for three or four hours I do community days on my stream this is typically the game that I play so that my viewers can jump on in and play with me I hope you guys liked it and I'm very very excited about the content coming out so I figured that I would cut another video I'll see y'all later thank you for stopping on in my name is Splattercat I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today it was Deep Rock Galactic. Tomorrow it will very much be something else. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for hanging out.